From the time of Lenin, communists have used mass organizations, also known as transmission belts, as the primary means of spreading the message of the party to the people. The original mass organizations within the Soviet Union were in fact the trade unions themselves. The Communist Party of the Soviet Union saw it as their task to win over to the Soviet state the members of these mass non-party organizations, while leaving them their character as organizations that are open to workers of various political views and attitudes, to party as well as non-party workers, to the literate and illiterate, religious and non-religious, etc. These trade unions were viewed as schools of communism, where the broad masses of workers could be trained in the art of managing socialist industry and gradually also agriculture. In the United States, communists were quick to follow the lead of the Soviet Union in the development of their own mass organizations. The Trade Union Educational League, or 2L, which emerged organically within the context of the American trade union movement under the leadership of William Z. Foster, was made into a mass organization of the Workers Party of America, later known as the Communist Party, USA. In 1922, after Comrade Foster visited the Soviet Union, the 2L implemented the policy of boring from within, seeking to raise the class consciousness of rank and file American trade unionists. Around the same time, the Communist International, or Comintern, based in the Soviet Union, set up pro-Soviet mass organizations in every country where there was a Communist Party. In the United States, this organization was called Friends of Soviet Russia. This organization promoted cultural exchange between Americans and the Soviet people, as well as material aid to help the Soviet people rebuild in the midst of the Russian Civil War. Friends of Soviet Russia also advocated for recognition of the Soviet government in a time when the American government still recognized the bourgeois Kerensky government. The mass organization which brought the Communist Party USA to new heights was the International Workers' Order, or IWO, founded in 1930. This organization emerged from the language federations, which were created by immigrant workers under the Socialist Party. Just as the Communist Party emerged from members of the Socialist Party who opposed World War I and supported the Bolshevik Revolution, the International Workers' Order emerged from the language federations for the same reasons and were under the leadership of the Communist Party USA. The IWO provided services to immigrant workers, most notably of which were old age security and healthcare benefits such as life insurance, burial services, and in-house doctors. The IWO also consisted of a collection of smaller mass organizations, each of which focused on a different cultural identity from ethnic groups which had immigrated to the United States in recent decades. These organizations included Jewish, Hispanic, Finnish, Slavic, Italian, and other ethnic formations. They provided immigrant workers with the support network of people from their own cultural and language backgrounds who held progressive views. In particular, having existed in the years leading up to World War II, these organizations had an emphasis on anti-fascism and support for the cause of labor. In 1933, the Communist Party USA then founded the American Committee for the Protection of the Foreign Born, which protected progressive-minded American immigrants from repression by the American government and from bigotry. The committee worked side by side with the International Labor Defense or ILD, another Communist Party mass organization which provided legal support. The committee defended members of the Abraham Lincoln Brigade, an American group which fought fascism in Spain, against being denied re-entry into the United States because of their communist affiliations. In 1940, it also defended Harry Bridges, who served as president of the International Longshoremen and Warehouse Union, or ILWU, for 40 years. These mass organizations, especially when they embraced the popular front strategy brought forward by the Comintern at its 7th Congress in 1935, brought the Communist Party into the mainstream of American political life. 
In fact, prior to the McCarthyite purges of the late 40s and 50s, the Communist Party was the third largest political organization in the United States, behind only the Democratic and Republican parties. Thus, the mass organization approach was proven effective as a means to bring the communist movement into the American mainstream.